Shalom, and welcome to B'nai Noach Academy, Thoughts on the Torah. Please remember to hit the like button, to subscribe, and most importantly, to share this insight and inspiration with friends and family. If you look in chapter 27 in the book of Numbers, verses 1 through 5, that's Numbers 27, 1 through 5. This is after God gives the instructions as to how the land in Israel should perpetually go from generation to generation, stay within the families, continue in the lineage, in short, the laws of inheritance, which primarily, according to the biblical law, goes to the sons versus the daughters. So here we read how the daughters of Tzlafhad, who had died, or I think more correctly, had been put to death, for his sin, he is no longer here. He only has daughters. So they came before Moses asking what's going to be with them. They were not yet married, so they didn't belong to any man in that sense. And they were wondering, are they going to be able to receive a parcel in the land, being that there are no sons? And Moses responds to them, by bringing their case before God. And God is the one who now gives the word, who now gives the ruling directly almost to them, but it's coming directly from God through Moses to them. Now Moses is only serving as a mouthpiece, not as a judge, not as a teacher, not as somebody who was making the ruling. Why? Remember, we're now close to the end of 40 years, almost an entire 40 years since they received, received the Torah at Mount Sinai. All these years, day after day, God has been instructing Moses the oral law, all the details, all the rules. You want to tell me Moses didn't know this rule? Is it possible that if Moses would have just sat down and thought for a little while, he would have remembered this obvious rule, which is an integral part of the laws of inheritance, that if there are no sons, then the daughters get to share? Why is it that Moses had to defer the ruling here to God? In other words, why did he disqualify himself? Why did he remove himself from this from this case. Well, notice the words that they said. In describing that their father is no longer here, they said, He was not amongst the congregation who congregated against God in the faction of Korach. Who did the faction of Korach oppose? Who did they openly fight against? Moses. Moshe, if you recall one of their main gripes, and they vocalized it very loudly, was against Moses. Thus, as soon as Moshe heard that, as soon as Moses heard that detail, he immediately recused himself because now there was some what of a personal connection to this, and he felt that he cannot be one hundred, or let's say one thousand, one million percent objective, because there is something here that connects personally to him. Although it's from the past, many, many years have transpired. Much has happened in between. It's almost forgotten. It doesn't really serve now as a threat to him. But the fact that it had some connection to him told him that he has to he is disqualified as being a true objective judge in this matter as truly and objectively and honestly with 1000% honestly to be able to give an objective judgment an objective ruling and that's why he recused himself and he said let god himself give the ruling and this teaches us how honest and how objective a judge must be this is not only when it comes to rulings in the sense of, you know, when people have dilemmas, judicial dilemmas, or people are 
perhaps have some kind of litigation against each other. But if you think about it, even our own personal lives, there are some times when we have to make a judgment about a very crucial matter, especially when it comes to how to serve God, how to be in, in relations with others. Sometimes we ourselves, because we have a connection to ourselves, therefore there is a bias. And therefore we need to find someone else, someone outside of ourselves that is absolutely and totally objective because they don't have the bias that we have. We have a bias, whether it's for our own comforts, for our own wants, for our own desires. And ask that person to be the judge, even though we may know the answer, but the answer should come from a absolute and true place of honesty. Honesty is total objectivity.